Okay, I want to talk about the step response of an LR circuit here. So let's first of all just imagine current supply driving driving an LR circuit. We're going to use a Norton network. So that means that this derivation will apply to a large number of other linear circuits, essentially any other linear circuit. Um, and let's say that the current supply is going to have a step response at time zero. So it's going to be a step up at time zero. If we graph it, it looks like this. Zero for low times, and that steps up. Right, I think I'd rather have some grid lines on this paper. All right, so this this circuit uh, has um, a current running in the inductor and a voltage across it. And let's try to find uh, one of these. Let's say what how. Let's ask how the current in the inductor responds as a function of time. So before we think about it too much, let's um, just sort of try to use our intuition and uh, try to see if we can make a reasonable guess at it. So, so the first question is, what is the current uh, near zero? So what is IL at time just after time zero? Well, before zero, the current was zero. So we can be pretty confident uh, that it was zero up until that moment. After zero, uh, the current has a choice. You can go through the resistor, or go through the inductor, or, or divide between them somehow. Now, the constitutive relation for the inductor, if you remember, is that um, the voltage is the time derivative of the inductance. And that voltage, uh, if you think about this voltage being finite, so let's assume that the voltage is finite. It's not that unreasonable assumption in sort of circuits that exist. Then it means that the derivative is finite. And if you have a function whose derivative is finite everywhere, well, the function has to be continuous. If you think about that, just sort of draw it for yourself for a second. Let's draw this function. Okay, the function can have a higher derivative, but not an infinite derivative. It can try to break, but it can't quite break. So a continuous derivative means a, and it can have notches in it and steps. The, the, the derivative itself doesn't have to be um, continuous, but the derivative has to be finite. It can never have an infinitely steep slope. So that means that, all right, so that means the current is continuous in an inductor. Well, if IL at zero plus was, at zero minus was zero, that means that IL at zero plus also has to be zero. So that means that the initial current in the inductor is zero. And that, by the way, tells us that the inductor behaves something like an open circuit, right? An open circuit in the short time limit, current B equals zero. Now it turns out that that's not generally true. Um, in general, in the short time limit, an inductor behaves like a current source. This particular current source has its source value set to zero, so the current is zero. All right, now let's suppose that um, we want to find the current at infinity. So we found the current at zero. Let's try to find the current at time infinity. What is IL at T 
equal to infinity. Well, if we go back to this constitutive relation, we notice that the voltage is a time derivative. Um, so we're going to make something called the steady state approximation, meaning that at infinity we hope that all time derivatives will go to zero. So that means that at infinity the voltage equals zero at infinity, which means that the circuit acts like a short circuit. There's no voltage drop across it. It acts like a short circuit. That kind of makes intuitive sense. An inductor, after all, is just a winding of wire. And if you are no longer having changing currents, it just should be able to, to have current flow through it. So, so now what we're going to do is we're going to find out what the current is at infinity. If the voltage is, is a short circuit, then all of this current is going to go through it. So that implies that IL at infinity is equal to I naught. So we can use the initial current and the final current in the fact that this is an exponentially it's an exponential system analogous to the capacitor to use the same formula we used for the capacitor. So that IL at any time in T is going to be the IL at the start minus the IL at infinity e to the minus t over the tau plus the IL at infinity. And that, for our values here, are is 0 minus I naught e to the minus t over L over R minus I zero or the usual step response I zero times one minus E to the minus T over L over R. If we graph that we get let's Um, so it goes up, there you go, okay, and it goes up to the value I naught. So this is very much like a voltage where you try to change the voltage, um, but it doesn't change instantaneously. With an inductor, you try to change the current, but the current doesn't change instantaneously. And you end up, you end up with, with this type of exponential uh, step. So... Let's go back and, and review. So the key things uh, in this circuit, it, to solve the circuit, is we're not going to write down a, we have a step, or fu step function, we're not going to write down differential equations, we're just going to use the fact that the current is finite in an inductor. And then we're going to find the initial and the final current, we're going to use the steadiest state approximation to find the final current. Uh, intuitively we can think of the of an unfluxed inductor as an open circuit in the short time period and any inductor as a short circuit in the long time period. And we use those two facts and then this relation that the current uh, can be described as uh, the amplitude of decay times e to the minus t over tau plus an offset to derive that the step is la lags uh, with a time constant of L over R uh, behind the step that's applied. And I want to emphasize one more thing, which is this is a Norton network, and therefore any linear circuit can be reduced to this circuit. So, you know, the source values and stuff will change, but it's still going to work.